Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Like Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. And by airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture To Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at crossculturetogo.com. This is Ed Cohen in San Diego, and you are on Global TV Talk Show. Our special guests today are from New York and Chicago. Diane DeRester is from New York. She's a certified public speaker, CSP, and she's also author of a couple of books. One is called, what is that called? Give the Finger to Somebody, or what? <laughs> Give Fear the Finger. <laughs> Give Fear the Finger. Okay, we'll get into that. And, and your newest book is what? Knockout Presentations, How to Deliver Your Message with Power, Punch, and Pizzazz. Great. Okay. In just a minute or so, we're going to show that book cover and maybe even both of them. And my co-host today and, and advisor and dear friend, Diane Devitt, thank you. You're in Chicago now, right? I'm in Chicago, Ed, but I'll always be a New York girl. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'm from Boston and, you know, even though I've been in California since 1980, um, it's, you know, I've still packed the car and have it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so Diane, you have a new book coming out uh, with others in it. And uh, we're going to show that book cover in just a minute. But what is the title of that book? The title of the new book is called to lead. It's success strategies for women. Yeah. You mean like a, a biblical calling to lead? Got an intuitive calling to lead. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the book was uniquely designed where I'm one of 17 authors. We each have a chapter and each chapter focuses on a different type of leadership from mindfulness to visionary to uh, remote leadership. You know, I happen to be focusing on creative leadership. Okay, we're going to show that book in just a minute mm -hmm. and we're going to get into well, part of your background has been in production, theatrical production, big events with heads of state and diplomats and C-level people. And you wrote a book and you always had this idea of meetings and events have certain colors. In other words, certain feelings, right? So That's the book right. is What Color Is Your Event, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. Tell us more about that approach. So... When I wrote the book, What Color Is Your Event, uh, just to your point, it was not color specifically, but color from an, an analogy point of view. It's, each color has a personality, a vibration, a feeling. And also it was a, uh, the intent was to get people thinking about their meetings and events and how they can use them from a creative point of view, just like advertising and PR have messages that they deliver, well, so do the meetings and events. And how you do that and through the creative resources that you use to produce that meeting and event matter to the outcome. Diane DeResta, um, your approach is to own the room, right? 
That's right. <laughs> I often ask audiences, when you walk into a room, do you own the room or does the room own you? And it's funny, on Saturday, I'm going to be doing a seminar on virtually, and it's called Own the Room, Own the Zoom, because now what I do is I help translate stage presence into screen presence. We need both of them now. Yeah, you're on TV, whether you like That's it right. or not. That's right. <laughs> so how do you own the room on a, uh, a screen that's 15 inches wide? Well, you know, I often work with people on two levels. It's mindset and skill set. So the first thing is you've got to set your mind right. We've got to work with confidence. We've got to look at what's your limiting belief and change that around. And once you're, you've got the right mindset, I, I'm important. I belong here. I have value to con convey. Then the next step is you need to know all of the techniques in showing up on a screen. So for example, when people convey presence, one of the things that you need to do is you need to make an eye connection. And most people have difficulty with that. And so I explain the difference between when you're in the room and the way you own the room with your eyes is you're looking at key people. Now notice what happens in a room. This is great because I'm inclusive, but I look scattered on a screen. So when you are on screen, you are a broadcaster. And I tell people that you have to think of this as a media interview. So you're looking directly at the lens. And this is a big challenge for people because as you know, I'm looking at you, but I can't see you, you're down here. So what I often <laughs> do is when I'm speaking, I'm looking directly at the lens because I want that eye connection. But then when you talk, I'm looking down because I want to see the nonverbals. So I show people all of these skills about presence to bring up their power. I work with people to help them show up powerfully so that they're confident, clear, and influential. And you can do that in the room or on the Zoom. So you're both wearing blue um, dress and eyeglasses. So that's, <laughs> supposed, that, that's supposed to be a calming thing, right? Absolutely. Do you want to speak to that, Diane, since you're the color person? Well, or? no, it, it's <laughs> a good it's a good color to use online. Uh, it's a it's a it's a color that projects um, black. No, red. Mm, be very careful which red and how you use it. So, and I, and Ed, you know, I've come on and spoken about media presence um, before and, and uh, there's so many, as Diane brought up, there's so many aspects to it that, that people um, are required to learn now. And that's what I would say is we jumped into this landscape, psh, you know what over a year ago mm -hmm. and we said we'll we'll make it work but you know what sitting on your sofa and sitting on your bed is not acceptable even in a personal zoom call mm -hmm. it's not acceptable the you know my 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 area of expertise is very sensory focused and the impression that you make it's what three seconds so we have a lot to be aware of Moving forward, this is not going away, right, Diane? It's Absolutely. Not you know, when people say, well, you know what? We've been using Zoom. We're eventually going to the office. Guess what? It's going to be a hybrid world, and you're going to be talking to your clients through Zoom So, and some of your remote workers. So it's really important to master that. Color is important. And just like the research says, it takes seven seconds or less to make a first impression. I believe on a virtual platform, it's instantaneous because... Okay. The minute you turn on the camera, there you are. So I spend a lot of time staging people, just like a real estate person stages a home. I stage persons on the Zoom screen so that when they show up, they're centered. They're wearing the right colors. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I worked with a client last year and she said, true disclosure, Diane, the company hired a vendor to bring in training. We did virtual training for four hours and I am not happy with the way my team is showing up. They're too laid back, they're too lax, they're not dressing well. So I came in and did a two hour, very focused Zoom presence because your executive presence doesn't go by the wayside just because you're on the screen. So it's really important. So Diane, you talk a lot about being creative. So. But people are nervous about being on screen. Uh, you know, they have an imposter syndrome problem or they, 
they get itchy or they have a coughing fit like I just had. And, <laughs> and, and, and they say, oh, God, I just want to disappear, you know, uh, but they forget to mute or hide, you know, on the thing. Um, and they don't want to look like Gliss fumbling around. Um, so how do you be creative in such an intense environment? Me, Diane? Yes. So yeah. I'll kick it off. But well, I think, again, I think this is going towards three factors in business. All right. One is what is, what is the meeting? What is the meeting that you're involved with? You know, if you're one of 400 and you're strictly listening with no input, okay, maybe that's acceptable to not have a screen presence. And in, in many cases, Diane Wright, Zoom, you can actually control that so that you yes, as you the can. host don't even have participation from the audience if it's a town hall or a mm -hmm. type of meeting. And this is where I'm going with this. The second thing is, okay, so what if it's my department or just a few people that I work with? Am I required to participate? Is it just as if I were sitting in a round table with three or four of my teammates and department, my presence is required, okay? On another scale is if, you, if you're in a webinar or a training session, and, and I'm sure Diane can share this with me as a speaker, all right, just as a speaker stands on a platform and, and a teacher stands in it, you need to see the reaction of the people that you're communicating with so that feeds you to how to move forward with things. I did a, I had a presentation. In fact, it was on media skills for the meetings industry. <laughs> and half of the group were, 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 um, excuse me, were their, their cameras weren't on. Oh. And so I said, yeah. I invited them to put their cameras on. And I said to my host, this turned into a whole issue with them to say, you know what, in the future, when we advertise these programs to our members and to our company, we need to put your camera presence is required. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just like we would put a dress code, you know, black tie or this and that. Your camera presence is required because audience participation, this, this, and this. <clears throat> now let's go to the one extra thing that I'll put on. So you mentioned, you know, in our conversation, young mothers being home and feeding this and that and doing personal things. I would say that's where you communicate with your host and say, I'll have my two year old at the time because I've been on meetings where mothers are feeding babies and this and that. And it is very distracting and not appropriate for a business, a business call, a business meeting. Yeah, right? it, it is a conflict. So, so <laughs> Diane, David, you also um, have 10 action steps um, could, could you think about that for a second? Uh, so, uh, Diane DeResta, uh, when you give uh, training sessions to a group, uh, let's say it's men and women, not just women, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, do you act differently if it's a mixed group rather than uh, all women? I would say this, the audiences are different and there are some gender differences. I find that when it's all women, it gets a little bit more personal. And there are certain things that we'll talk about that would not be discussed with men, uh, more on the makeup side or even the issues of children and distractions and that kind of thing. But for the most part, the content is the same. People have the same needs. And it's really important that people show up. And so to Diane's point, if there is a, a woman that has a two-year-old, that's a person who should have their video off and still attend the meeting. But that would be with prior knowledge. So uh, yeah, there are some differences. Let me tell you a little bit of some of the female presentation issues I've seen. One of the things that is typical, more typical of women is the head tilt. Now this is not, seriously, this is not a good powerful posture. Yes, it shows you're listening, but what anthropologists tell us is that when an animal surrenders in the wild, they expose their neck. So when you do this subliminally, your audience is picking up on weakness. So I don't see men doing that as much as women. So I will point out some of those differences. Now I used to talk about 
up talk. I still do, but it used to be valley girl talk. And that's a rising inflection. That sounds like you're asking a question. You're really making a statement. Now that <laughs> used to be female, but guess what? Now it's generational. So I hear the men and women at a certain age level or demographic using that. And I tell people it does not serve you in the workplace because you sound tentative. And so we show them how to have conviction by bringing their voice down. I will say, I don't hear this pattern in the executive suite. So it can be done. But so, yes, we do talk about some of those differences between male and female. Men tend to be much more direct, factual. Women will tend to want to know the backstory and share the backstory. So we talk about what's appropriate to the situation and the audience. Well, you know, that's a you really know, good I, point. It, yeah. Isn't it a good point, Ed? And you know, Ed, it's, it's funny because one of the things that I was just discussing uh, a couple of weeks ago was I when in my experience making videos, I always said, let's do a 10 point checklist ahead of time. Take it seriously. Like Diane just pointed out, women have different, they just do different concerns than men, uh, which I'm sure we'll get into with dress and this and that. But um, yeah, it's, 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 it's like you said, we're, we're all, we're all live right now. Right. So, so what about the selection of people for speaking roles in a group event? Diane Duresta, uh, you mentioned the Valley Girls. So that's referring to Sherman Oaks and Encino uh, rather than uh, Ridgewood or Parsippany. Well, the thing is, it's crossed the pond. It's no longer Valley Girl talk. It's even in the UK now, we hear that, we call it up talk or up speak because it, it's no longer related to California. You know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if that was the result of using the overuse of exclamation points. Good because question. think about it, the exclamation, everyone's like, dear Ed versus dear Ed, yeah. right? <laughs> Everybody is up there, but you know, yeah, right. That's interesting. Yeah, I just yeah, I don't know how I don't know how it originated, but I know it's an issue. And I'll tell you, I had a an angel investor contact me. He found me on the internet, and he said, "My millennial employees are driving me crazy with up talk." Now, okay, maybe if you're selling to a peer, it's okay, but if you're selling to a sixty year old investor, it's not going to work. Can you come here and do something? So I did a program for them. And uh, he took it from there, but he was very serious that he did not want that in the workplace. Well, because it's branding, it's the yeah. culture. That's right. We are our brand, right? Yes. So, uh, and a lot of people don't think of themselves that way or don't want to. And yet, well, I think they should not be invited back. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think, Diane, Devin? Well, Ed, you know me well enough, and I've been on the show, and I'm all about screen presence, as Diane has her background, this and that. And I mean, I'm, I, I almost wanted to come on with a disclaimer and say, yes, this is my background temporarily because I moved a week ago. But I was still very conscious of having a non-distracting background um, for this show uh, versus a virtual background because it, I... Again, this and this is a topic too to think about is is the virtual background the vir virtual background is excellent when I'm sitting at my dining room table and that's my workspace or a branding piece. But is there as this type of event, this is so conversant, it's people, you reach people. So you almost want an approachable background mm -hmm. that yes. says, that says, you know what, I'm here, I'm rolling up my sleeves, I'm having a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's business focused. Yes, we're learning. But you can, you know, you can talk to me. Right? I mean, it's, and if I can add to that, what I have is my background is called blur. And if you have the latest version of zoom, you can get it, it just blurs your background. What I like is it really puts you forward so the focus is here but I also created a background and I'll see if I can find it for you I chose not to do this because I thought it might be overkill 
let me just see, choose virtual background. Well, because some of the Zoom backgrounds make you look like you're losing your shoulder or your arms. Yeah. So well, I made this, and this is great for branding. If you look at it, I'm a certified virtual presenter. There's my book and there's my logo. So when I'm networking, this works great because I don't have to say anything and it makes me memorable, but I didn't want to be overkill for a conversation like this. So I'll go yeah. back to Blur. Uh, but okay, it is your brand. Let's bring up Paul, uh, producer Paul, if you could show the two book covers uh, are uh, the book covers uh, for uh, the knockout punch and then the Diane uh, Devitt book cover about call to lead call to lead yes wow. <clears throat> okay so call to lead is a compilation uh, of books uh, of chapters or sayings or please do a deep dive on that so there are there are five five sections to the book, and it is focused on the businesswoman, uh, any age businesswoman, the power of being called to lead, the power of self self mastery and leadership, uh, the power of influential leadership, the power of emotions and the mind in leadership, and lastly the power of leadership love. So out of those five segments, there are three to four chapters that are, are uh, reflective of different women who contributed to their specific niche. Uh, so it's when you read this, you read this, you read a chapter at a time, you absorb it, you read a chapter at a time, you absorb it. So you're getting different perspectives from women globally, from Japan to Norway. Uh, is in, is involved. It's very interesting. I learned things in reading and participating in this book. Now, what was your take? Uh, what was your input in this book? So my chapter is called The Creative Leader. And uh, you'll have an introduction of your background. You have advice for her the section and um, under the advice for her, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but basically start the chapter with the best advice that I ever received was not to give advice unless you're asked. Well, yeah, like butt out. Huh? You know, or, nobody or, wants to, nobody wants, <laughs> nobody wants to hear that. So, so anyway, but then there, and then there are 10 action tips and I, you know, just to mention a few is uh, with leadership and when you have a department and a team and a company is, do you recognize leadership as a, an innate skill for everyone? You know, I often say my, the most creative person in my life is my accountant. Uh, doesn't have to be out there in pink hair, but do you recognize that creativity at its core is coming up with solutions and answers and problem solving? Of, and which is what we're all involved with now, right, Ed? I mean, the whole world wants to figure yeah. out how to do what's next that's going to be best for them. So how to reinvent, right? How yes. to reinvent. And that's what I'm focusing my consulting time in is working with groups and facilitating that. But and I think the other thing with leadership is allowing people to express themselves and that isn't done enough. Uh, it can be done very innocuously with a graffiti board or a box of ideas or something that says, I respect your thinking. I respect your ideas. I, I respect your perspective. You are part of this team. That's belonging. It's belonging. Yes, yeah. it's belonging. And it's, col and it's collaboration, right? Perfect. Yeah. Producer Paul, can we show Diane DeResta's books? <laughs> okay, so so I want to know: did, did you think of this thing in a fit of rage? Uh, all right, or, let me just, let me just say something. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of flack, so I don't talk about it as much. It came because I learned of an acupressure point that is right here on the finger, and when you press down on this finger, it helps reduce anxiety. It's an acupressure point, and so this oh, finger? So you, the, the wait, third which? finger, yes, the the ring, the finger, the highest finger, the middle finger. Ah, yeah. so when you press down on it, right behind the knuckle, I don't know if you can see that, behind the knuckle, 
Okay. It, it's an acupressure point that's supposed to relieve anxiety. So when I learned that, I said, wow, you're literally giving fear the finger. And so that's how I came up with the title. Now, Diane was one of my biggest supporters and she said, you've got to use that title. It's great. But I got a lot of flack from people that I don't like that. It's not whatever. So I went with it because I, I couldn't resist, but it's a book that's devoted strictly to techniques for managing fear of speaking. So I would really think awesome. that that fear, that title will attract guys will will attract uh, readers who are guys yeah yeah and new yorkers you know people who have an edge <laughs> it goes very well so you know there's certain places that it's not going to do as well but uh but i just thought it was a it, it's alliterative it's it has punch you know, and, and it, it, it's a play on words so i went with it that that is a great one and congratulations on Thank that you. uh in fact i'd like to read that and so um life is a presentation and so knockout that is like boxing right mm -hmm. okay my publisher originally came up with that title and it's become my brand for a number of years. And the, what's different about this book is I wrote it as a seminar in a book. So what that means is it's the next best thing to having me there. If you can't work with me either in a group or on, from a stage or one-on-one, -on -one, then you can read this book and you're gonna get a lot of good information. In fact, I've gotten feedback, colleges have used it. And they said, your book by far was a standout because there's no theory in it. It's not fluff. It gives you the real tools and there are checklists and do's and don'ts and exercises. So it's mapped out to start with delivery, Q and A, how to organize a talk. I have two chapters on structure. I have a chapter on listening, which is unusual. People don't relate listening to speaking, but it really is the other side of speaking. I have a chapter on analyzing an audience. I find that that's the weakest part when I work with people. We don't spend enough time doing that deep dive and that listener profile. I have a section on setting the stage and setting expectations and the kind of thing that Diane would think about when you're setting up a meeting. So there are a lot of interesting things that people learn from the book. It's very practical. So oh, Diane, this is a little uh, off the wall here, um, but uh, um, Biden and Putin are going to meet in Geneva <laughs> and uh, talk about a knockout meeting. But oh, yeah. um, so what color would that meeting be? Oh, I think that would be red, <laughs> would be red <laughs> and black. And you're the you're the color expert, Diane. What would you say? Well, I would definitely go with red, but I I'd rather say white and no color and let them all bring you know both bring their own right so uh That'd be good well, white be is interesting red color. is a little red is a little confrontational even though yeah. it's a it's a yeah. it's a power color i i would if i had to choose i'd say i'd go with a green which is more green is communication mm-hmm Blue, I green, and see. green and blue is yeah. blue is more community blue, blue is communication blue is trust it's conservative it's we're here for the long term and that's right, exactly. why many companies many corporations have blue in their logo for that reason we interrupt this broadcast to bring you a timely announcement hi i'm sergey gorbatov i'm angela lane together we're researchers writers and practitioners in the field of human resources and we've also been multi-country multi-assignment career expats we owe our professional development and growth to a very large extent to the international assignment opportunities that we have had. But in a world where distributed work may become the norm, we also want to understand what will happen to the nature, duration and purpose of international assignments. Together with our colleague Julian Dalzell from the University of South Carolina, we're undertaking a study on the future of expatriation. And we'd value your contribution. You can participate in this important study by completing a simple 10 minute questionnaire. Access the questionnaire by typing in your browser tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. That's tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. You can also find the link here on Ed's website next to this video.
Thank you for joining us in this study. In return for your contribution, we'll provide you with a copy of our research. And of course, you'll be invited to an exclusive webinar hosted by Ed, where we will share our findings right here on Global Business News. And so please go to tinyurl.com forward slash expat study. Take the survey so that we can better understand the future of expatriation. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers them this great flexibility and for the program owners of these sports leagues it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need they see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in in our country and in other countries but it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both <laughs> so, so it's really interesting, Diane or Esther, the cover of your book, Knockout. Paul, if you could go back to that that book cover uh, of Knockout presentations, um, uh, the blue and the red uh, boxing uh, gloves, and I guess that's a microphone in the middle. Yes. Um, and so I couldn't. The first thing that popped into my mind, though, after that, after seeing that, was Knockout politics. I mean, the Republicans oh. and the Democrats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I never thought of other, that. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not pitching well, anything here. But. No, I think it's great. I, I think it's great. It's true. It's And this is the impact of visual, right, of, yes. of what we see now. And I'll show you. I'd like to show you something, too, with, with the book cover that I'm involved with. Can you go there, Paul? Is that possible? I the the like, one we just saw? The, yes, the called to lead book. And I'll, because I'd like to point something out to you. I don't even know if this is true, but this is what I, my input was to the uh, publisher was, are the, is that lipstick? Ooh. Wow. Oh, I didn't know. Is that, I love the cover. I didn't that think. A, is that a, is that a lip, is that a variation on lipstick as a powerful tool? That's interesting. So everything is subliminal and how we interpret it, isn't it, mm. right? Boy, I can't think, you know, I'm having these flashes here, but uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 I'm not, not hot flashes, but visual flashes. Um, and uh, what I'm thinking of uh, Sarah Palin, when she told that um, joke about putting on lipstick. a pig. <laughs> yes, God. yeah, yeah. Anyway, right. back to this That's book That's interesting. <laughs> I don't know. It shows you where my head is. So it's out there. So let's reel me back in here. So um, call to lead is to what? Lead, you mean just speak up? 
call to lead is to embrace who you are, right? Is embrace, embrace who you are, have confidence in yourself to express what you're thinking, to know and, and recognize that everyone has a different part in leadership. And last but not least, do not sit back. Do you know that, that our differences are our strengths? And when you recognize who you are and what you bring to a team, that actually helps develop that team so that you can all work together. It's really interesting. In that book, Diane Devitt, um, off the top of your head, this mm -hmm. is unrehearsed audience in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> so um, someone else's work, someone mm -hmm. else's chapter, which one mm -hmm. is like stuck out to you right away, bang, and still? Uh, the one chapter that did stick out with me was um, mindfulness. Mindfulness, the mindful leader in terms of do we take the time to really know the people who are working with us and do we respect who they are, where they come from versus, and business is business, no doubt about it. We have goals, we have, we have uh, KPIs, we have all of this to respect and achieve. But when we're thoughtful of other people, people are then thoughtful and work better. I mean, I don't know the, the statistics offhand, but I do know that a happy employee reaps more than someone who isn't mm -hmm. pleased at work. Diane DeResta, one of your uh, bullet points um, refers to valuable free action. Okay, and that relates to what? You know, helping people pick out one thing that needs assistance on? Um, I think what I had put on there, a valuable free action would be something that somebody could do on their own that wouldn't cost anything. Good. And uh, so there are lots of things that people can do. And uh, I'm trying to remember the, the last thing that I, I recommended. Uh, let's see. Well, um, it's, I'll read this. Uh, what is one valuable free resources that you can direct people to that will further help with a problem? Yeah, it depends on what the problem is. But one of the things that I recommended was something on Facebook. So people aren't sure how they come across. So what you can do in Facebook is you can create a green room of your own and make it private. And then what you can do is you can do your whole presentation and watch it and nobody else can see it. So it's like your own private rehearsal room and that's available to anybody who has an account on Facebook. So that's an example of a free valuable action. And I've used my own, I have a green room on Facebook. That's a good idea, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that's really interesting. So, so many tools, are there so many tools coming up? Isn't that incredible? I have to, can, I share, can I share one for people yes, on Zoom? Yes, please, yes. This is called ZapPad. And what it is, and I, I don't, sell this but i just got it i love it it's a hot keypad and so instead of having to use your mouse to shut off your video or whatever everything's on this you can mute the whole audience you can go from the gallery view to speaker view you can turn your video and your microphone on and off you can get the chat going so it's a really cool tool so it's it's, it's keystrokes rather than mouse yes yeah so adios paul Adios, Paul. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, you can end it too. <laughs> no, That's listen, nothing takes place. And, and I'm going to say this. I mean, look, we're, there's different topics we're talking about. Nothing, nothing takes the place of a live producer to, to manage a broadcast, edit it. Agree. Take it. But, but for the day-to-day -day meetings that we have in our lives, um, the tools are only going to get more and more amazing. But Diane, I have to, I have to say this to you. Like one of the things when I first met Diane DeResta, and she's an expert in this area, is gestures and the and and how a gesture, especially on the screen, can distract people if I'm using my hands all the time. Mm -hmm. And Ed, we've spoken about this, but Diane is the she's the model. Well I always tell people this this is true of stage presence or screen presence. You want your gestures above the waist. 
because anything below midline is tentative or weak energy. So I always say your power space is from your waist to your face. Now, when you're on the screen, you have to minimize your gestures because first of all, this is frenetic and I have a limited view here. So keep your gestures close to your chest, keep them simple. There's one thing I wanna to talk to you about. Let's look at last year versus this year. Notice they're close to my chest because if I put my hands here, they get enlarged and exaggerated. So use gestures because you need that for your energy, but minimal gestures, appropriate gestures close to the chest. Diane DeResta, tell us about this designation CSP and how, how, uh, how unique it is. CSP is Certified Speaking Professional. It's a designation given by National Speakers Association. There is, I think, fewer than 22 people worldwide that have it. It's not easy to get because you have to have a certain level of income from speaking. Then you have to pre present, you have to record all of your presentations over, I believe, a 10-year period. So it is so time consuming where it was, how many, what was the name of it? How, what did you get paid? Then you have to contact, I don't know if it was six, six or 10 clients and they had to fill out a survey on you and evaluate you. And the final piece is you have to do a one hour live video and you have to submit it. And then some, a couple of people critique it. So it's a lot to go through. And it took me many, many years before I could get to that point. But it's worth but, its But it's an honor, gold. yeah. Well, I got that in 2015. Well, you know what too, Ed, is I, I think professional planners, professional communication, production people understand the speaker's role. Uh, I mean, this is a whole different topic, but I don't know that people really understand what Diane just described and what is entailed in these accreditations. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It takes time. Okay. Uh, our friend in Monaco, Christine Morlay, is a CSP. Mm -hmm. And I think she was the first woman to win that in France. Wow. Yeah. And she, she and I are producing Global Voices for Change on June 25, a global telecon. And I hope uh, you both can uh, be involved in that. Um, so... Uh, Diane DeResta, one thing, we've t talked about a number of things here, one thing that, one thing that you will uh, tell the audience that they could use uh, this afternoon or tomorrow in their next Zoom <laughs> talk about how to do it better. There's one thing. One thing that would help their Zoom, I, I would say commit to being present a lot of people are not present. They're on their phones, they're taking notes. Be totally present and then take breaks because if you don't do that and you sit too long, you're really going to be zoomed out and very fatigued. And then practice the eye contact because that's one of the hardest things. Practice looking just at the lens and the more that you practice that, the more natural it's going to be. So those are some of the things that I would work with on Zoom. And the main thing is you need to engage people. The talking head is dead. So look at ways that you can break up your message, break up your content and interact with people. Even if it's chatting, make use of the chat a lot. Get people responding. And you can do it very simply. One of the ways you can save time is instead of having people say, write out a word, just say, is it yes or no? Type Y for yes, N for no. And that goes very quickly. And then you're getting a response and people are engaged. The more you have them interacting, the more they're going to stay with you. So Diane DeResta, executive speaker, she says, be irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> don't speak up, what happens is you can become invisible in an organization. More than ever before, speaking is the new competitive weapon. 
what you do is you take this third finger, you bend it. Right. Put your. Yeah, wait, I want to put your hand back a little bit so they put can your okay. finger here right. on the knuckle and put it back. Uh huh. And then press on this spot. So an acupressure. An point. acupressure point. And this, this goes, goes where? To, goes to the heart, and it's a way to short circuit anxiety. Really. I worked with a woman recently, and we worked on the breathing and this fear factor finger. Uh -huh. And she felt that this was a big success. She came back and said, I'm usually very nervous before I speak at my networking group. And this time I was calm. She nailed it. You gave she her really good did. things to think about. I really believe everybody can be effective in delivering a message. Gifted speakers are born, but effective speakers are made. for a moment. You know you need to work off those cookies. <laughs> okay. All right. Raise your hand as high as you can. Take your right hand. Can you see me in the back? I am standing. <laughs> All right. Form a fist. All together, touch your chin. This is your chin. <laughs> for those of you, be honest now, for those of you who did this, why? You saw me do it. Am I that powerful? <laughs> what this demonstrates is this. Whenever there is a disconnect, people will believe the visual over the words. In other words, people literally will discount what you just said in order to believe what they see. They will discount what they hear in order to believe what they see. That is the power of the visual. I've known Diane DeResta for about 10 years, and we've worked on several projects together. I've referred her as a writer and a speaker and a consultant to several of my corporate clients. And when people work with Diane, they love her. She's terrific, and I highly recommend you considering Diane DeResta for all your communications projects. So, uh, Diane Devitt, uh, are, are you back inside the classroom at NYU? Uh as of the fall, we will be. That's the goal with NYU. It's not um, a hundred percent official, but I think it's where this where the school is going and aiming toward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what what do you think your lesson plan number one will be? Well, I, I'm most likely be teaching a hybrid class. Uh, number one, number two is, and I've been working with my students on this over the past year, is They've learned and they've had a jump start on everything virtual and technical, and they're so comfortable now um, because I do teach them screen presence and the power of the, me the virtual meeting, but now they have to jump in and meet real people. The expression IRL in real life huh, is, is now trending and um, so I think it's going to be interesting throwing them into a situation where they have to work with real people. Now, in and real life means face to face. Face to face, right? And and not this way. Not this way. <laughs> this is this is virtual, right? And and I just and I just say this too is I, I wanted to add to Diane's uh, perspective on this, Ed, because I think it's a big thing from a production point of view is be mindful of your lighting, be mindful of your sound. That means you can't go on Zoom a minute before a meeting starts and expect everything to work. You really need to take time to prepare it, to go on, to see what your presence is like, to see what the lighting is like. I mean, I'm very uh, conscious today because I'm in a temporary setting of the glare on my glasses Right. Try to keep that uh, minimal. And I hope it, it's been minimal. Yeah. Uh, yes. But but the thing is, but I'm but again, it's it's awkward for the person who is not used to it. But I had to think about that. So, yes. So students, st I've been teaching students this because I feel with students, they need to know right from the get go the importance of their presence. Diane DeResta, uh, could you summarize what you want the audience to take away? 
I would say this, that speaking is the new competitive advantage and you can no longer be without this skill. And what's different, why that's, that's true is number one, it's more competitive than ever before. So it's hard to be heard above the noise. And we're a world of commoditization, mass commoditization. So even if you have something unique, it's a matter of time before your competitors can duplicate it. So what separates you from everyone else is your presentation. I, I say that public speaking is like a yam. Know yourself, know your audience, know your message. Keep it simple. And everybody can do this. I'll leave you with this. Gifted speakers are born, but effective speakers are made. I'd say go out and give a knockout presentation. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for being our guest. Thank Diane you. Diane DeResta, please come back uh, on to uh, Global TV Talk Show. And uh, Diane Devitt, it's been a delight. I wish you the best with your new book. You, Thank and, you. and the group of uh, mastermind women. Thank uh, you. And, uh, you know, perhaps we could do a dedicated program uh, this summer uh, with uh, people from your, that group. Consider it done. And uh -huh. I just leave people with this too, is with, uh, with your creative thinking. Remember, you can be too creative, whether online, or off. So. Whoa, yeah. So what does that mean though? <laughs> what does that mean is yeah. <laughs> sometimes people think creativity is, is pink squiggles and, and, ah, and yeah. wearing something outlandish or expressive, but it could be distracting. Well, this so. is great. Uh, and uh, are you going to go back to doing, to producing big events? I'm, I'm actually, launching something in the fall which we will speak about in future shows i'm excited about Good. and i'm continuing you know to do my creativity workshops and so it's all good we have to meet the demands of what the market needs now don't we ed yeah right now and right, right now, now people are frenetic i mean there's economic boom going on here in southern california and everything is just like alive, like, whoa. And 30, 40 days ago, boy, it was not. Yes. So yeah. it's, it's all good. And I think we have to owe that to uh, the vaccines. Uh, it's a miracle that they're, they're working. So that's great. Let's be well and happy and prosperous. Thanks for being on Global TV Talk Show. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. Bye, Ed. Bye, Diane. Bye, Bye Diane. Thank Thank you. Great Thank to you, see Paul. you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.